Here's how I understand impartation. In John 1, 14, John said, Jesus came full of grace and truth. So he's full of truth, full of grace. But it wasn't for him. Uh, he gave it away. In John uh, chapter 1, verse 16, two verses away, it says, And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. So Jesus didn't come full of grace and truth for himself. He came to give it away, and we re were the recipients of this grace, uh, and we received it. The Amplified Bible made that whole concept come alive for me. It says, For out of his fullness, abundance, have we all received and all had a share and were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing and favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. What a picture. It's kind of like you see at a sports game where they, they get in a huddle and they put their hands on top of each other. It's like blessing on top of blessing, grace upon grace, gift upon gift, favor upon favor, heaped up, stacked up. What an amazing picture of, an, of the abundance of grace. So John said, we've all received from his abundance. Uh, the Apostle Paul had this revelation in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 and 11. And the revelation was Jesus ascending, giving gifts to men. So the picture... And then he goes on to describe apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and that, that that grace isn't for us, it's to give away for the, for the building up of the body. And so uh, the grace is to continue to be uh, given. So he, I don't know how he saw this, I don't know how he knew this, but he got it by revelation somehow that Jesus ascended and left the grace that he came with. He came full of grace and truth, but when he ascended, he left the grace in the earth. So in other words, all the gifts and all the callings, Jesus came as the apostle, he came as the, the prophet, not a prophet, the prophet. He came as the great evangelist. He's the master, he's the teacher, he's the Lord, our shepherd. He is, he is those, uh, those gifts. And he imparted it into the earth so that when he ascended, he never took it back to heaven. You don't need to be a prophet in heaven when everything is declared, everything is revealed, and God can speak for himself. You don't need to be a prophet in heaven. You don't need to be a teacher in heaven. There's, God, God will teach us, and, and, and we don't need... Uh, to be an evangelist in heaven. Can you imagine being an evangelist in heaven and everyone's saved? I mean, that would be a kind of hell to have that gift beating in your heart and there's no one to evangelize. All the gifts. I mean, even the trees can heal in heaven. Why do you need a gift of healing in heaven? There's no demons to discern. There's no demons to cast out. Uh, you don't need a gift of faith in heaven. You don't need working of miracles. Everything is miraculous. So the gifts aren't needed in heaven. The callings aren't needed in heaven. They are needed here. So Jesus, when he ascended, left the grace here. Now here's something that's fascinating. God has this propensity for hiding his greatest things in the least likeliest places you'd look for it. For example, he hides the king of glory in a cow trough in a manger rather than in a mansion. And he does that all the time. I, you know, his, his glory is hidden in clay vessels. I mean, it's his glory hidden in a, in a crock pot, in, a, in a, a clay jar. It's an amazing thing. Only God thinks this way. He's so humble and he thinks this way. And so, so the grace of God was left in the earth and it's hidden in the least likeliest places we look for it. It's hidden in the body of Christ. It's in the body. His truth is hidden. He, he left his truth. His truth is hidden in the, in the church. That's why Paul said that the church is the ground and the pillar 
of the truth. If you're going to look for truth, you don't go to City Hall. You don't go to the police station. You don't go to the Moose Lodge. You're not going to find truth there. The only place in the earth where you can actually find truth is in the church. And you have to, you have to relate to the church to get the truth. They're the only ones who know the truth. His gifts are in the body. So let's think about this for a minute. If this is true, that his gifts are all hidden in the body, then our staying in close proximity to the body is the key to receiving grace. That's why the enemy is working so hard to get us detached from the body of Christ. If he can get us detached from the body of Christ, he can separate us from the grace of God. Grace flows through the body. That's why Paul, he's, he's writing to the Corinthians in chapter 12, and he describes the gifts, and then he goes on and he talks at length about how the body works, how a human body works. Well, he's, he's not just coming up with a nifty concept. He's describing how grace moves through the body. The more we understand how a body works, the more we, no, the more we relate to the body, the more we can humbly receive from each other, the more we're able to receive the grace that Jesus left in the earth. Let's, let me finish by saying this. It doesn't take a lot of humility to receive from Jesus. Jesus is beautiful. Jesus is perfect. His theology is perfect. He's altogether lovely. For us to receive from Jesus, that doesn't take a lot of humility. Paul and uh, James and Peter all, all taught that grace can be gotten through humility. So humility is a great key. What takes humility is for us to receive from each other. It takes humility to receive from me. It takes humility to receive from someone who's not perfect, whose theology is still in progress, who doesn't know it all, who doesn't have it all, who's got imperfections and weaknesses. For us to say, I see those things, but I also see grace that I need. So while I see that you, you're not perfect, I'm going to receive the grace that you have because I need that grace. And that's how God wants us to receive. He wants us to receive through the body. That's why the enemy is working so hard to get us to be uh, disjointed. He doesn't want churches lined up with, linked up with other churches. He doesn't want us freely relating to other parts of the body of Christ because if he can do that, he can stop the grace of God from flowing the way it's supposed to flow. Amen?